So um, this is going to be actually a joint session. First, I'm going to do a, I'm going to go the, an over definitions of what a quality management system might be or is, uh, and how you would you would want to establish this. Whether you have something or you're starting brand new, this is actually I've I've brought you an example that's for a life situation where I had to go over uh, developing an LDR process program in a urology practice. That's, uh, that is, was a perfect example for this uh, crowd here. So I'll do that for about 10 minutes. Uh, nothing to disclose on my side. Uh, overall uh, objective, in fact, uh, the physics as well as the physicians who will be talking about what quality uh, means in brachytherapy. So we, we focus on uh, uh, the QMP aspects, whether it's LDR or HDR. There's a lot of common grounds there and provide you with that example. So first thing I want to remind you don't get hanged with, oh, are you doing it exactly how I do uh, brachytherapy? Meaning, sometimes quality, as I quote here, Ernst and Young, is that uh, the, phrase is, uh, the phrase says that quality cannot be copied. The, there is one step-by-step -step cookbook. There is no step-by-step -step cookbook that applies equally uh, to all company situations and cultures. And think about cultures. Your culture... Wherever, how you guys do things here in Denver, um, I visited yesterday the University of Colorado and looked at how they do brachytherapy, and there are slight variations to how I do it. And exactly because the, the environmental aspects and the culture of that practice. So this is the cartoon that really stated that not all these guys could uh, demonstrate a single test to prove their quality. So let's get, step back and see what's the industry. This is not just healthcare industry. This is a definition from... Uh, uh, from the grounds up on, on what's, a, what's a quality management system. It's a formalized system or program that documents processes, procedures, and responsibilities for achieving quality policies and objectives. So the uh, QMS uh, uh, also will help you as an organization to, to meet the customer. And who is our customer here? It is the patient. Of course, as a physicist, also my customer is the the rad onc to provide a, a program that is w working in a, in a, in a, in the right direction for their requirement, and of course there are the NRC. I mean, in this especially in the United States, you have uh, the regulatory requirements, um, and uh, and so the, these are the considerations you have to, to take. And a good example in the industry is ISO 9001. You probably heard about that. It's an international standard. So from that, I kind of uh, started looking at how I would establish my, uh, my uh, quality management program. And this is a great paper, actually, just to remind you that uh, increasing there is a need for quality management of in, in our practices uh, because there is an increasing apparently, uh, increasingly apparent that the efficacy surrogates as the bio chemical relapse free survivals and morbidity are dependent on uh, implant quality, and Dr. Keyes uh, uh, very well defined these uh, for you. So how do you build it? Let's uh, dig into this. You definitely want to break this down into what we call the uh, PDE, PDCA cycle. You, you create a design. This is a multidisciplinary team practice, so make sure everybody on the table, including the urologist, the anesthesiologist, and I would encourage you to do a fishbone diagram for that. We'll show you some examples on that. Then you start building the program. You order the equipment. Uh, you write policies and SOPs. And just because you write them initially, that doesn't mean that's what you're going to do. It's just you have a good standing point. And as you go through the deployment, you revise. If, if your SOPs are being written and they're rigid, they will never be uh, actually uh, used. So you have to revise those in, at the deployment. And then you, you introduce the control and measure. This is your quality control. This is what is the pass-fail criteria for your, uh, for, and you then you perform the quality assurance, which are the tasks to ensure the QCs are, are uh, uh, respected, these levels. And this is a cyclical cycle. We want you to always do that, meaning repeat if you are stagnant, if you think you're uh, 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 SOPs has been there for over a year and never changed, please revisit. That means you, they, are, they are stagnant. So this is just an example from Bruce Dumatson a few years ago, it's just a fishbone for an LDR. Um, basically, this is also, he was leading it toward what we call TG100, 
uh, practice for the AAPM, for those physicists who know about it. But sorry, it's not meant for you to read all the details other than it's very nice to put something down to, to, to lay in front of your team uh, to understand. And really, for me, I kind of highlighted the things that I've learned in terms of uh, what I needed to know. Uh, you, you have to look at factors before anesthesia, check all team members have arrived. This is, these are the things that in the OR, at, before your patient goes under anesthesia, check that, do you have the physicist? I mean, did they arrive? Did the, the, the right onc, well, at one time we've had a right onc who thought he, it's not his day to cover. So you really have to do these things. So any of these items, not here where Bruce has put, but I've learned kind of the way that to say, You've got to really make it very specific to how your workflow and add these factors. This is another example. This is a, even more complicated. This is an MR-based prostate HDR brachy fishbone diagram. We just put that. This is actually a Memorial Sloan workflow. Uh, from, and this is, I borrow from a pending task group called TG303 through the APM with collaboration of the ABS members. The idea there, again, the fishbone diagram will really produce for you what you need to know. So Chris will talk about LDR, Bruce will follow HDR. These are the elements that we thought we broke down. And if you think about it, I mean, it's a very challenge for us to give you a 60 minutes of all the nuts and bolts, but we're really gonna give you the best highlights of all these aspects that will, will help you uh, launch your program. So here's my example. My example about a year ago, as the a urology group in Dover. I, I practice at Christiana Care. It's kind of here. It's about an hour away from my practice. I have very viable, we do maybe five to seven LDR uh, uh, implantation a week. Um, we have tons of HDRs, a lot of GYNs, uh, partial breast uh, with the savvy, skin, you name it. But I have a group here who are really not related to us, and they ask us to come in and establish an LDR program. So my first impulse, knowing what I know about quality management, it's like, uh-uh, I'm not doing it, right? Then I thought, what am I doing, right? How, how can I say, especially, hopefully, I'm on the leadership path of the ABS to say, I don't want to do prostate seed implants far away. How am I going to do this? All right, so... So what, what happened really there is, is really leadership sometimes is about courage, right? It's not about saying, I know for a fact I can't do this. So I've forced myself to go down and sit down with this practice to understand what they have. So I've learned they have 38 surgeons, not just urologists, modern equipment, OR. They want about 50 LDR prostates per year, about three to four cases per month. I know in my OR I could do about one patient in 45 minutes, in and out, if I'm organized well. So the question that, can I do that many cases in one day per month? That's the challenge I thought. And I, then I said, maybe I could also mimic our equipment. We have a real-time MIC, Hitachi, very seed, make the same thing, processes. We're not figuring out a new equipment, a new place. So I started my workout here, same thing. I went there, documented. I looked at their documents, where is the hot lab? There was no hot lab. This is a urology practice with no radiation safety officers, nothing. It is purely, pure like slate. So I said, that's a wonderful opportunity for me to practice what I preach on the podium, say, let's do this. Because I always walked into a practice with already have some RSO hot lab. We walked in with the manager, nurse manager and say, you know what, I like this spot. And she said, you know what? This is my office. I said, <laughs> I said, oh, I'm sorry, but this is really the best hot lab I could see in your facility. It's secure. It has the cameras. It's... And she said, okay. And I was like, great. I have much of collaborations with this, with this person, never met in my life, walked in, introduced myself, Dr. Rabin, my uh, authorized user who will be performing those, asked me to go down and visit. It was really hard first trip. But the idea there, we mapped where the seeds will be delivered, where it's going to be done, wh what, which ORs there, and it was just fabulous. I'll tell you this. We even looked at how you lay out your equipment in their OR. They've never done this. 
So it's not fair for them to come on, on day one and say, oh, where is that plug for my, uh, uh, you know, where's the monitor, where is this? You really walk into them, do a simulation of where you are layout. Build your SOPs, order the equipments. Equipments was easy because we told them we want to mimic what we got, so that was no problem. SOPs were very simple. Why? Because look at your NRC 10 CFR part 35. I understand it's overwhelming if you are very new looking at all the details there, but really everything you need is in those documents. So I, while I won't go through those details, but please visit that and you could see all of the things I'm going to tell you today are, have to be in, in those documentation. And I'm actually, to tell you the truth, I never filled one of these applications. It's a $5,500 processing fee for you to apply for that. So I thought I'm going to show it to you because there are about 11 items here uh, that is actually what going to be part of your, the elements of your uh, quality management program. Okay? So it's not, it is that difficult. Here's an example of my attachment. One of the attachment radiation safety program includes a LARA quality management program. They want to review that. So it's really, I think the NRC made it simpler for us because you're going to have a peer review by the inspector who say, yes, do this. No, I, I think you should do this. So walk with your, what, your regulatory uh, person to, to allow you to do this. So these are kind of uh, the, uh, the aspects of what you want to state in your, in your QMP, your policy, scope, purpose. I won't go through all of those. And here's my 12 elements. However, they are not exactly the elements you might have. Of course, most of them will be what you're going to use. But feel free to add to these. These are what I felt are the 12 elements I produced over the many years I've done uh, brachytherapy that are very well uh, well describing. One of the things I could tell you is waste disposal. We've learned that, we've changed that. We used to actually ship seeds after the procedure. You have maybe five seeds left. You accumulate those, you ship them back to the vendor. And then we realized we, our physics time was non-productive, especially if I want to go to Dover. That means the physicists have to stay after the, and do all of that paperwork. So we changed to decay and storage aspects. So be creative. Make sure you do things that are uh, Productive. Uh, one uh, item I want to give you an example of is the initial and annual training. These nurses I trained initially for the the uh, PSI program, where one they were in attendance. We spent an hour explaining what's radiation, what's safety, all of those, and they were very attentive. Okay, it's not only it is. To me, I will never do something without training them, but it's actually required by the law and by the NRC. So what you do there, it's, it's actually very interesting uh, uh, dynamic interaction because they have never seen this stuff. You kind of engage them with, with a, a fun one hour, how you want to do uh, your presentation. I could, if, you are, if you're interested, I could share it with what we've developed. But it's really something, you make it um, engaged, relevant to their practice. And the end, you could even give them a small quiz. Of course, don't try to say this is to penalize you, walk them with the quiz, with the answers, have them understand what you have just said to them. Deployment, these are the next two talks. Um, we'll talk about that. And this is just an example of SOP forms. I give you just uh, things that you might have to look into as you, you develop. Uh, this is my uh, uh, quality, continuous quality management team there. The, we just have our annual, so I mentioned to you the initial, uh, initial program creation, but make sure routinely you sit with all the team members on the table, say what is working well and what is not working so well. You'll be surprised the comments that you get from a nurse, from your staff physicist, that they're kind of little shy about saying and they're really something they're irritated about. So your program only successful longevity-wise if you really address those and keep the loop of cycle for your quality improvement. So in conclusion, high-quality QMP elements are drivers towards superior patient outcomes. There's no question about that. QMP should be dynamic process with continual improvement cycle. Thank you.